How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. I've been doing tutorials for a few years now and I realized that while I often show you how to do something, an effect, a transition, that kind of thing, I never actually showed you how to save that as a preset. I don't think I have anyway. And I know that I have my own presets that I sell on my Selfie, Selfie store, but I think that knowing how to save a preset just to be able to sell it, it's not the only application there is for this. There are probably a number of routines that you do when you're editing that you could save a lot of time by saving those steps, those keyframes, those shifts in volume, that kind of thing as a preset. And I don't really think this particularly conflicts with my own interest of trying to sell my own presets because a lot of the stuff that I sell is slightly more complicated and that is why you're buying it, not just because it's a preset set up for you. However, what I really want to show you is that you can save a lot of time on small things. And once you know how to do that, you can even start creating your own presets, your own more complex presets for effects, for that kind of thing. So let's jump into Premiere Pro and I will show you how you can save an effect as a preset to reapply as many times as you want in different ways. But first, let's spin that intro. Okay, so we're in Premiere Pro, and if you watched my tutorial last week about how to create an audio stutter transition, that's something I like to do regularly in my tutorials. You probably heard it just before the intro stopped just a second ago. Now, because that's something I like to do regularly, it doesn't really make sense for me to waste time chopping out individual frames every time I want to apply that effect. It would make more sense for me to be able to create a preset of that effect and then use that as a single drag and drop to apply that effect to every single edit from there on. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do today. So I'm going to take this track called Treat Me This Way by Otis McDonald. By the way, check him out. He's fantastic for free music to use on YouTube for monetizing, all of that. You can get all of the tracks that he produces on the YouTube audio library. And it's just, it's top quality stuff. Okay, so like I showed you in the previous tutorial, I'm just going to come along to a random part, hit Control or Command K and slice that clip and just get rid of it there because this is where I would want the clip to end. Now in the previous tutorial, I would come along, I would slice there, take a frame out, get rid of it, and then come along, take another frame out, get rid of that, and then slice and slice and so on and so forth. And that would give me this effect. But having to do that slicing manual work seems just a little bit wasteful of time really. So I'm gonna get rid of those and just bring that back to its original length. So ideally what I would wanna be able to do is animate an effect which replicates that cut instead of actually physically cutting that clip. And if you click on this and come up to your effects controls, you can actually see that volume level is keyframeable. When it's keyframeable, it means you can animate it. And so if we just go ahead and drop a keyframe there, skip one frame, drop another, and just go ahead and drop a keyframe on every frame for, I don't know, the next 10 frames or so. Then if you zoom in with the plus and minus keys up on this effects controls panel, you can actually skip between the different frames and start manipulating them. So the very last frame, I want to be at full audio. The previous frame, I wanna just hold shift and drag this all the way down. There we go, minus 287.5 decibels. No creature on the planet could hear that. Okay, then the third last keyframe back up to zero. Then the next one, keep it at zero. Then the next one, we'll bring it all the way down again to negative 287.5. Then the next one, zero. Then the next one, negative 2.875, 287.5 I mean, and again. And just keep going in the random pattern that you would normally choose to do that as I showed you in the tutorial. And now if we play this back, and so what we've essentially done is recreated that cutting effect, but by keyframing instead. Now, what do you do with this once you've done this? You don't wanna to have to go through and keyframe this every single time because it kind of defeats the whole point of trying to do this with keyframes. You could just go ahead and slice it. Well, what you do is you click on the effect that you want to save as a preset. And if you had, for example, a phaser on this or some delay or reverb or EQ or that kind of thing, you would just select that as well. And then right click, save preset, and here we go, this is how you save your effects as a preset. So I'm gonna call this one Audio Stutter. Now the type is very important. Because this is an effect that we want to happen at the end of a clip, 
we're actually going to anchor it to the out point. If I were to hit scale, it would spread all of those keyframes across the entire duration of this clip. And if I anchored it to the in point, it would put these keyframes at the 34 second ish mark or 33 second ish mark on any new clip that I create. So really what I want to do is anchor it to the out point. Now I can add in a little description there as well saying trim desired clip before applying effect. That way it's kind of obvious to whoever might want to use that effect that they need to cut their clip before they apply the effect. Otherwise the keyframes will be applied just naturally at the very end of the clip. Okay, and so now let's put it to the test. Let's delete this track, drag the music back in, and then let's just go to a different spot, like there at 11 seconds, cut it, and then come up to your effects, drop down your custom presets, and you should see it appear near the top there audio stutter. Fantastic. You can tell it's an audio preset because there's a little uh, speaker cone in it. If there's a little film reel, then it means that it's a picture preset, video preset. And so I'm going to take audio stutter. And I'm just going to drag it onto my clip. Now, if you zoom in, you can see all of those keyframes have been applied right at the end of it. And if we play it back, <laughs> lovely. Okay, so let's say we want to make that just a little bit more special. Let's drop down the audio effects and we're going to go to, I'm going to scroll down to L to low pass filter. Okay, we're going to drop that on there as well. Now what we're going to do is zoom in and we're going to go to the last keyframe and then we're going to hit that cut off toggle for, for keyframing on the low pass filter. Okay, and we're just going to drag this down to about, yeah, to about a thousand hertz, let's say. Okay, and we're going to come along here maybe Where's it at there? 11. Let's come along to nine seconds and hit another keyframe. And here we're just going to hit 20,000 on here because 20,000 is, it's not really cutting anything off. And so now if we play it back, then what we could do is select volume, hold command or control, click low pass. And with both of those highlighted, save preset. And here we'll call this audio stutter low pass. And again, anchor it to the out point, delete that clip, come over, drag that clip back in, and let's go somewhere closer to the end, I guess, like here. There we go. Let's chop off the tail and then go back to effects, into your presets and audio stutter, low pass, lovely. Drop it on there. And there you go. Your effects preset has applied to that clip and we've got the stutter and we have the low pass going. So if we listen to this, so if we listen to this, that's working really nicely. Now a little trick, if you've got keyframes on an audio track, what you can do is drag down this bar here just a little bit and it'll actually show you a kind of representation of those keyframes because what we're doing is affecting the level of that track, the audio level, which is what's already triggered here to show as a keyframe. If you drag it down a tiny bit more so it's you know, much bigger, you can actually see your individual keyframes there and toggle between them. And so it's quite handy to be able to see that kind of thing just at a glance instead of having to come up to the effect controls panel because this thing's not always the best. But basically that is just how easy it is to save your effects as presets. All right, that's it for me. I hope you found this useful educational, inspirational even. There's still two weeks to go on the February giveaway where you have the chance to win a full license of Syncala, which is a audio syncing software for Premiere Pro, for Final Cut, for DaVinci Resolve, all of these nonlinear editors where you can export an XML, sync up all your audio and then bring it back in way better than the inbuilt functions of your editor can. You just head on right up over there and there's six different ways that you can enter the running. Give this a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me at DoD Media. Hit that little bell there, you'll get notified when a new video comes out. Leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions about this tutorial, if you have any requests for future tutorials. I'd love to hear from you. Tutorials, struggle with that one. See you in the next video. Shoo.